A little while ago, I made a video talking about uh, how to handle errors in relativity processing. Since then, people are asking me questions about relativity processing. What do I think about it? Like how it compares to other software and such. So in this video, let's talk about relativity processing. And uh, keep in mind, this is not going to be a comprehensive guide of everything good and bad in relativity processing because uh, a couple of reasons. First, I didn't use every processing software out there. I only used a few. And there are also a lot of details one can go into, like talking about specific file types or certain things. We're gonna go on like very general sort of broad strokes where I think of relativity processing, some of the good and bad things. And let's talk about these things in three parts. Speed, file type handling, and ease of use. So let's talk about each one of those separately. And when it comes to speed, relativity processing is the fastest processing software I've used. It can crunch through eDocs like it's no one's business. Uh, it has a, a proprietary reading algorithm for PSTs, so it doesn't use a map it to read the content of a PST. So it crunches through data super quickly. I believe they also have a very specialized algorithm to process NSF files, but I'm not, not entirely sure about that. So the speed is the fastest so software that I've ever used. Uh, keep in mind, I am running it on a physical hardware. Uh, this is not a virtual environment that I'm using. So that may be different based on how you have it set up. And now for each of these categories, we do need to mention downside. So what's the downside of fast processing? Well, the downside is it does get stuck on occasion and you need to contact support to get your problems resolved. And this would be true for pretty much any software. However, here's an interesting way of looking at it. Let's say you can process 40 gigs an hour and you made your estimate that today you're gonna to process this much data and something happened and software crashed or you got stuck and you have to get on the phone with tech support. Well, now if you spend two hours on a phone with tech support, you're 80 gigs behind your initial estimate. So the faster the software processes, your estimates should match according to that when you provide them to clients or project managers. And therefore, if you get stuck for some reason, you lose that much more time, you're that, that much further behind in your estimate. Now, is it a downside or not? I don't know, but it does happen that software does get stuck, you're not able to fix it yourself, and you do need a person from Relativity to fix it for you. Next thing we should talk about is file type handling. So Relativity processing does handle a lot, a lot of different file types. Um, I probably the biggest collection of file types I've seen and uh, the one file type that no one seemed to be able to handle relativity as tackling that now, which are Mac file types, pages, no, keynotes, and numbers. Um, I don't know any other software that uh, is able to handle them, and I think relativity processing is going to have support for that coming out real soon. I believe the viewer is going to support it first, and then the processing engine second. Now, the downside of file type handling are error messages. And whenever software can't handle something, it's got a problem with the file type or corrupt file, the error messages you get are super cryptic. They're really hard to figure out, especially in the beginning. And they're definitely a downside of a file type handling. Now, as a programmer, I want to explain the error messages a little bit. So what happens when you write a program and let's say you make a call to operating system on API, uh, an error happens. Well, that API operating system returns an error message back to your application, which you can then either display to a user as is, or you convert it to some kind of friendly error message that end user would prefer seeing something not as cryptic or as crazy. So in a way, programmers, what they do is they capture the error message from the operating system and they kind of smooth it out and make it more pretty or nicer for the user. However, when that happens, you usually lose some of the meaning to the error message. Uh, error message may be very detailed or very descriptive that comes back from operating system as to what happened. And then you convert it to an un a sort of a friendly but less meaningful error message. So this is where Relativity and any other software maker needs to make a decision as to how friendly the error messages is, are gonna, going to be. And the balance of it is, do you want it to be more informative or more user-friendly? And what Relativity did here is they went with more informative as opposed to user-friendly. So it will take you some time to figure out what the error messages mean, how to handle them, like what the actual action to take on when you see this. But once you figure them out, uh, I think they're more useful than something like a pretty error message that uh, doesn't indicate what to actually do about it. 
And finally, let's get to ease of use. And Relativity Processing is probably the easiest software to use that I have ever used. Aside from figuring out error messages, which are your initial learning curve, it's very simple. You point to a folder, you hit run, and it just does everything for you. Um, the part that I like the most is how easy it is to get data from your processing site into the review site, so the pub process called publishing. And publishing is just the easiest thing to do. It doesn't actually copy native files. It only transfers your uh, records from one SQL server to another. You click a button, and bam, and it's done. But of course, there has to be a downside. And the downside is the way processing site is connected to review site. Now, everything in Relativity is connected by what's called an artifact ID. It's like a generic ID that you don't even see. So all the objects are connected by artifact ID. However, not with processing. In processing, uh, two pieces are connected by control number, which makes no sense why they would do such a thing. So if you assign the control number or doc ID number and you publish documents, you cannot change the doc ID later in your workspace. If you do, you're gonna have issues with updating duplicate custodian information and updating uh, other fields like that. And I know it's kind of a silly thing to talk about, like who cares what the doc ID prefix is, right? It's just a system number. Once we produce, we're gonna assign the real number. But no, there's some clients that really care about that and they ask, can we change it after the fact? And the answer is no, you cannot change your prefix. So that would be one of the downsides of how relativity processing is connected to the actual workspace. So those would be my sort of broad strokes about relativity processing. Uh, there's, I realize there's a lot, a lot to go into it, uh, but I do welcome you to put your questions in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer questions as far as either file types or anything else. All right, talk to you guys later.